established him a covenant of peace and made him the prince, that he might have the dignity of the priesthood forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, today as we gather, we celebrate the feast of St. Leo the Great, Pope and Doctor of the Church. And as we prepare now to enter into our worship together, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we never allow the gates of hell to prevail against your church, firm, firmly founded on the apostolic rock. Grant her, we pray, that through the intercession of Pope St. Leo, she may stand firm in your truth and know the protection of lasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, you must say what is consistent with sound doctrine, namely that older men should be temperate, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, love, and endurance. Similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanderers, not addicted to drink, teaching what is good, so that they may train younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, chaste, good homemakers, under the control of their husbands, so that the word of God may not be discredited. Urge the younger men, similarly, to control themselves, showing yourself as a model of good deeds in every respect, with integrity in your teaching, dignity and sound speech that cannot be criticized, so that the opponent will be put to shame without anything bad to say about us. For the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we wait the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's request. That's the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The Lord watches over the lives of the wholehearted. Their inheritance lasts forever. By the Lord are the steps of a man made firm and he approves his way. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. The just shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. 
servants, we have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I would say that uh, some of the most personally moving moments in my priestly ministry have been opportunities when I have witnessed firsthand uh, people who are taking care of those who are chronically or terminally ill. And so many times in the midst of it, whether it is a family member, a spouse, or I think particularly sometimes an older child uh, with older parents, and I sometimes am just absolutely amazed because particularly as the condition worsens sometimes or the situation changes, the, the intensity of the care increases as well. And so many times I'll say, you know, just the course of non-conversation, oh, well, God bless you for what you're doing or, you know, <coughs> sure this person or that person appreciates it. And many times what I will hear is someone, especially when they're taking care of a spouse, will say, well, I'm only doing what I'm expected to do. I'm only doing what my marriage vows promised that I would do. It's nothing more than that, one senior or father. And uh, I always say, yeah, I guess when you put it that way, but when you see it in action, it, it really makes a difference. And we probably can think of a lot of other situations, even outside the sense of healthcare, when maybe we have witnessed that as well. And if we pause to think a moment how that affected us, uh, looking, so to speak, from the outside in. And maybe also we can reflect in our own lives when maybe we've been doing that and we say, well, well why do you say that? I mean, I'm just doing what I'm, I'm supposed to do. You know, I'm just, you know, someone like, well, you're working so hard. I'm only putting in an eight-hour day. That's what I'm contracted to do. Sometimes in light of, uh, of the signs, the culture, and the situations in which we find ourselves, sometimes it is indeed the ordinary becomes more extraordinary. But I think beyond that, from the eyes of the world, our gospel passage today reminds us that as disciples of Jesus, we are called to be generous, to give of ourselves. And the point of today's gospel, when we read it, we might say, why isn't Jesus advocating for this poor man? He should say, yeah, you should be my equal. Sit at the table, have something to eat. But Jesus is focusing in on the call to discipleship to be always generous, not just meeting the mark, but going beyond the mark in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. You know, we can never be too generous. Now, when I say that, I don't mean just by passing the plate. <laughs> but I mean, and our generousness in our speech to one another, our generousness in our actions, 
our generousness in just giving of ourselves. And when we think about that, I think so many times when we think about the passion of our Lord on the cross, we ultimately think of the sacrifice, we think of the suffering, we think of his love and his mercy. But a lot of times I don't think we think of what he did on the cross necessarily. The first thing that comes to our mind is the word generous. <laughs> but if we stop and ponder about that and think about that, it was the most perfect act of generosity because Jesus didn't have to do any of that for himself, but he did it for us. And in showing that unbounded love of the Father through that sacrifice, through that suffering, through giving his all, he gave the world a perfect example <laughs> of generosity. And indeed, as the Lord reminds us today, sometimes <clears throat> it's hard to be generous. And isn't it amazing Sometimes in our own human disposition, we can be generous in certain things without even a hesitation. You know, oh, you know, write out a check, or oh, you know, I'll give them my time. I'm going to go come volunteer. That crazy priest is going to sanitize the church after, but I'll go down and do that. Yeah, uh, and all of these things. But then sometimes there's those things in our lives where we may not even consciously realize it, but we may not be equally as, as generous. And what I would contend today is that when we look into our hearts and our minds and our souls itself, we might want to try to identify, you know, where is it or what part of my life am I not being as generous as I could? And then even more importantly, what's hindering me from doing that? Today we celebrate the feast of Pope Saint Leo the Great. And we know as we look at the history of the church, the tremendous contributions that Pope St. Leo made. And not only in his tremendous intellect, but with his phenomenal leadership ability, and in the times in every age when the church was facing challenges, Pope St. Leo is called great, not because he called himself great, but he was given the title great from an objective point of view long after his death, looking back and seeing what he had done, he is termed great not by the eyes of the world, but by the eyes of God. And that is because of the generosity of the pouring out and the returning of the gifts that God gave to him, his intellect, his holiness, his strong demeanor that led to tremendous, important, and decisive leadership decisions in the church at the time. And so, as we hear in our first reading from St. Paul to Titus, all of these different instructions, you know, for the old men, for the old women, for the young men. There's no the young women. I'm sort of uh, interesting. But uh, we're all given. The bottom line is it's given to all of us, isn't it? And what it's meant to do is not just specifically. It's really reminding us in all the seasons of our lives, in the different seasons of our lives, how in every season we're to be virtuous, we're to be prudent, we're to be filled with integrity. That's what makes us great in the eyes of God. If we are not judged by the eyes of the world, for if dare I say, what the world may call great in the eyes of God. It fails in great, great dominion for what God is looking for. But let us strive to be great in the eyes of God with the perfect humility, with that perfect dimension of sacrifice, and with that beautiful sense of fidelity to what God has given us and what the church is teaching us so that we may continue to grow, so that indeed, having come in uh, figuratively from the fields of our lives. Uh, we're not ready to plop at a table, but we're ready to move on to the next task, whatever that might be that God may give us to do. And let us do it in that spirit of simplicity, humility, and most of all, in that spirit of generosity. Indeed, as especially we celebrate this month of November, we remember the souls, and we celebrate it All Saints Day. We remind ourselves of that beautiful scripture passage you know, blessed are they who have indeed fulfilled the Beatitudes of God. They are the ones who will be great in the eyes of God. My dear brothers and sisters, we continue today as God's beloved people, and we turn to him now with our prayers and petitions. Let us pray that all members of the church may be conformed to the spirit of Christ, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That God's spirit of justice may be upon national leaders, guiding them in their service to their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That the Lord in his great mercy may bring about an end to the scourge of human trafficking and a greater respect for all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That this community of faith may grow in love and zeal for the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all of our sick, that we continue to offer up in our prayers today, especially all of our homebound, the hospitalized, the suffering, and the dying, and for those who care for them. May the Lord give them strength, health, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, O Lord. For all of our personal needs, for those needs listed in our parish book of prayer, for all those we have promised to remember today, and all those we hold now in the silence of our hearts and bring before the Lord. Hear us. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For Laureen Ernest, for whom we offer Mass today, for all of those listed in our parish book of memorials, and for all the faithful departed, that they who have died may find now eternal rest and peace in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Heavenly Father, in your mercy we ask you to hear our prayers, and today through the intercession and the example of Saint Leo the Great, may we strive always to serve you in our brothers and sisters, and continue to build up the body of Christ, the Church, throughout the world. We ask this and all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the offerings made here, we pray, O Lord, graciously shed light on your church, so that your flock may everywhere prosper, and that under your governance, the shepherd may become pleasing to your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We are the of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Leo the Great, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, our patron, with St. Leo the Great, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, <coughs> him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Peter said to Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Let us pray. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to govern the church you have nourished by the holy meal, so that firmly directed she may enjoy ever greater freedom and persevere in integrity of religion. Through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Amen. I see Kat's wearing her United States Marine Corps uh, shirt. 
Today is the 245th birthday of the Marines, so as we prepare to celebrate Veterans Day, we give a uh, shout out to all of our Marines and thank them for their service uh, on this important birthday of the Marine Corps. Bridget, no offense to the Army, we'll celebrate their birthday. 245, that's pretty good. That's good. It's like the scriptures today, it's like the, the older man. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go 